So perimenopause usually begins like it's a new color from Crayola. <laughs> <laughs> it's next to the how do you pronounce C Y A N? Um, cyan. Cyan. <laughs> yeah, and periwinkle. It's between those two. Yeah, it's between it's a mix two. between uh, periwinkle and cyan. Yeah, or cerulean. I like cerulean. Oh yeah. Um, remember that feeling of getting the sixty-four count of crayons, the fresh one. It? Fresh crayons. My cock was made out of concrete, man. <laughs> Call back. That was great. Five stars. That was a good one. Um, so, perimenopause usually is like mid forties. Varies completely person to person. Like fucking everything else we've talked about. Um, what a relief. I know, right? Isn't it just give you that comfort that you know when it's coming? <laughs> and so, <then> you don't. <laughs> and then you don't. <laughs> You're just in a dark room. <laughs> um, so this is when, like, hormone levels and the menstrual cycle start changing. So um, your ovaries start getting smaller and making less estrogen. Um, some months maybe they release an egg. Other months they don't. Uh, maybe your periods are shorter or longer. Your cycle's longer or shorter. Or maybe your bleeding is heavier or lighter, or you you're skipping. Pregnant? You can still get pregnant. <laughs> I actually have, with a bunch of exclamation points, pregnancy is still possible during perimenopause. And the thing is, I think, I think you see those like surprise pregnancies because people think they're constantly going when their cycles are regular. I'm not getting my period anymore, so I'm in menopause. Mm, yeah. Um, because menopause is not going to start until you've had 12 months without. A menstrual cycle which even then i would not be trusting it to be honest no but i i mean i personally intend to have a hysterectomy when i am done spawning that's so, reasonable like you can the ovaries can stay but yeah like i don't need i don't need it i mean tie them off because i don't want one of those colon babies that you're talking about no but. liver babies for me <laughs> um <laughs> And, like, these changes happen slowly over time, so I think sometimes they kind of sneak up on people and they don't realize it. Yeah. Um, Again, because at that point, you've got, you know, a teenager or whatever as if right. you've had decided to have children. Right. They're a nightmare. Uh, yeah, you're like just... episode. <laughs> yes. Go back to our episode where we're talking about puber- puberty and Pubert, adoles- the, <laughs> the adolescent nightmare. Pubert to the hormone monster. <laughs> I don't know how we got this far without talking about hormone monsters, by I the know. way. We meant to mention it in the puberty episode because if you have not watched Big Mouth. Oh, how did we not even mention I Big Mouth? I don't even know. I don't know. Hold Big on. Mouth is the best show. Okay. If Big Mouth had been around when I was like a preteen, I would have felt so much less weird. Oh my God. Like, I. A plus to Nick Kroll because the writing on that show does such a good job of like destigmatizing so many of the things that kids so that many go things through. like masturbation in a healthy way yes yeah and, it, and it acknowledges so that all of those kids like we discussed in our last episode you're all going through it at the same time but nobody was talking about it right. so you had no idea you just felt so gross yes <laughs> constantly you were surrounded by a shame wizard all the time yes and an oh anxiety God. mosquito <sighs> And and that's the other thing too is they have this really amazing, um, the metaphors that they use and these different characters that they develop yes. capture these experiences just so well. Like the hormone monsters are so fucking funny, but also so accurate, so spot on. Maury is the yep. hormone monster for the guys. Uh, Connie, Connie is the hormone monster for the girls. And fucking Connie, I swear, when the girl goes off on her mom. And she slams her bedroom door. And then Connie is there and goes, that was great. No notes. <laughs> it's like so proud of her for screaming yes. at her mother. Yes. It is so just spot Take on. Take that, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
let's go take a bubble bath. Yeah, I mean, Maya it is, Rudolph kills it. It's so excellent. And it's I on just, Netflix, just to be clear. There's a bunch of seasons of it now. And I remember watching the first season. I was like, oh my God, this is so vulgar. Yes. But it was so accurate and extremely funny. And it's just these like pervy kids. Yes. Um, these preteen kids hitting puberty. Full of hormones. Boys. Yeah. Just, like, figuring out and, like, feeling bad because their penis hasn't grown. Yes. Um, the way their peers has have um, that, you know, girls are getting their period on a school trip. Or and, their boobs haven't started developing yet. Yes. Or, like, just a whole and list of... also they deal with, like, changing family dynamics, divorces, yes. parents who are grossly open with how much they love each other. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> parents who are super uptight. About- and suppressed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There's it just has like such a good it covers so many bases. So many. It is it is just 10 out of 10. There's a depression kitty. Yep. Um there's the love bug. Yes. <laughs> it it really is and those different roles also evolve. So like the yeah. love bug could then turn into that hate snake yes. that was wrapped around somebody's neck that as the hate grows, it gets bigger and like weighs them down. Yeah. So th- just the the imagery that they use is so excellent and the right and it's and it's also like extremely funny. So funny. And also extremely graphic and gross. Yes. Um like Coach Steve. Yeah. Make think in the war. Yes, I could have done without that, but thank you very much. <laughs> they also deal with um, sexuality. And, they do, um, yep. You know, discovering your sexuality and, and your preferences and those first boyfriends and girlfriends and how, yep. like, fucking toxic it is, yes. no matter who it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, spectacular show. I can't can't recommend it enough. And I can't believe we didn't talk about it during the puberty episode, even though I made a note about it, because I was like, oh, I should have mentioned that. Yeah. So, Nick Kroll, if you're listening, I mean, why wouldn't you be? Please sponsor us. <laughs> Come on our podcast because we would love to talk about Big Mouth. I could honestly. I wouldn't be able to talk. That's the problem. I, I could do a Big Mouth podcast where all we pants. do is talk about that show. Oh my because God. it is just. Yeah. Like a million stars. I think it's really something they should be proud of because I think they've really done such an excellent job. It is. And it is. You're right. It's that thing of like, if I had had this. Oh my 20, God. 25 years ago. What a difference that would have made. Yeah, it it for like my self esteem, like I wouldn't yes. have felt weird about so exactly. many things, and it just, I just can't. Uh, I'm I'm so jealous of kids today. Yes, <laughs> yes. in that way, I'm like that they get to have big mouth to kind of help them understand puberty, even yes. and like that base. Yeah, it's it's vulgar, but like let's be real, I'm not going to stop swearing around my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I am who I am. <laughs> Me and Popeye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it's going to happen. I, I'll do my best, but... Good luck. It's going to slip. There's a reason we had to label this explicit. I can't be trusted. Neither of us can. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, as an aside, if you haven't watched that, watch it because it's, it's great. It's a really great show. I think they actually have a new season coming out soon. And I think they just did a spinoff to that Human, Human Resources, Resources about the yeah. hormone monsters, which was also great. Yes. Um... But anyway, uh, back to menopause. <laughs> you know. The average age of the last menstrual period is 51. Oh, but wow. like also. That's way later than I thought it yeah, was. Yeah. The, well, they're saying, so the average so length. 40 is the new 30. <laughs> so what you're saying is <laughs> the average length of perimenopause is four years, but it can last like over 10. Absolutely not. No. Which is like, take my uterus. Take it. Give it to somebody who wants one. <laughs> I'm not using it. I'm done. Give it to Goodwill. I don't give a shit. Feed it to Hillary Clinton. Whoever you need to give this. No, I'm not doing 10 years of perimenopause. You can eat my whole dick. No. Anyway, um, I'm fine. Well, you know, it's funny that <laughs> that triggered you to go off on that thing. Because I have a note here that... That's a really long period of time for something that I feel like is not discussed. And 50% of the population is dealing with this change. And I have in all caps for 10 years. No, no. Crazy. You will, I will. So, you know, in the 40 year old virgin, when he realizes that his coworkers know that he's a virgin now (laughs) and he goes home and he's just walking from room to room screaming. (laughs) That's me. And you'll know that I've hit perimenopause. Yes. Because that's what I will be doing. Would you like to know the signs and symptoms? 
Is it that you have outbursts about perimenopause? Because <laughs> if I've hit perimenopause at the age of 35, no, I quit. I will it's just okay. lay down in the middle of the road and wait for death. It, <laughs> it is. It's so long. Okay. So in the months or years leading up to menopause, also known as perimenopause, these are the signs and symptoms. Irregular periods. Vaginal dryness. Hot flashes. Chills. Night sweats. Sleep problems. Mood and emotional changes. Weight gain and slow of metabolism. Thinning hair. Dry skin. Loss of breast fullness. Loss of energy and fatigue. Sadness. Irritability. Fuzzy thinking. And memory difficulties. Sorry, everybody. They, okay, I'm sorry, but sadness and fuzzy thinking that's my baseline (laughs) right like why it's bizarre to me and pissing me off that they're not using uh like depression and brain fog like they're using these like kid glove words yeah i don't know where you just have the sads that might be from healthline blue pal you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed for 10 years in a fucking row. <laughs> Maybe I'm sad because I have severe vaginal dryness. Because that would make me sad. Maybe I'm sad because I not only have severe vaginal dryness, but I also have massive ass crack sweat, apparently, in the middle of the night. When I'm not sleeping, and I have hot flashes, but also chills at the same time. So my, my underwear is soaked through because I've sweat myself to death, yep. but my vagina is too dry to even get off with my partner. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Jod. What? <laughs> I told you that this was just going to be a very upsetting episode. I um, forgot that warning. Yeah. <laughs> the So the loss of estrogen, because, you know, your ovaries are shrinking, leads to a decrease in serotonin and dopamine levels in the brain, which obviously is then going to worsen things like depression and anxiety. And the emotional symptoms can be more pronounced in women with ADHD because emotional dysregulation. We know how that goes. Um, (laughs) As if you didn't just have a front row seat. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't positive this time. Nope. (laughs) Um, And it's also not uncommon for people who maybe had like mild ADHD symptoms in their 20s and 30s to have worsening symptoms starting in their like mid 40s. Makes sense. Um. And so, but I mean, on the bright side, sometimes that worsening of symptoms can prompt a diagnosis. Maybe it's something that you didn't know about for the last, you know, if we could get the DSM to cut the shit with this, your symptoms have to have been there since by the age of seven. Ridiculous. It's nonsense, especially if sleep deprivation, PTSD, they're thinking can now trigger ADHD, which I don't think that that's necessarily what happened with me, but I do think that that certainly spiked my symptoms. Oh, definitely. In a fucking horrible way. When, you're, when your brain is in a state of panic, yeah. of course you're going to be have trouble concentrating. Yeah. I mean... I think that that is ultimately what led to my diagnosis was mm-hmm. my PTSD. Mm-hmm. Not... I mean, I for sure had it all along. <laughs> but I was coping, I guess. Right, right, right. Getting through. I didn't right. have the... The comorbid anxiety and depression. Yeah. That was my special add-on for PTSD Superstore. That's my nice little cocktail that I got. Mm -hmm. I got a BOGO deal on mental health. (laughs) But, I mean, stimulants can be effective. Yeah. Um, And sometimes, um, you know, the hormone therapies that they use for perimenopause and menopause can help ease those symptoms, which then in turn can maybe help ease some of your ADHD symptoms. Obviously, nothing's going to be like a fix for ADHD, but, you know. Go to your annual checkups with your GP and your uh, OBGYN. And be honest with them. Yeah. Tell them if you're struggling. And advocate for yourself. Tell them about your butt crack sweat. Tell them about the butt crack sweat. Tell them about the vaginal dryness. Let them know that your boobs are, are deflated and droopy. Yeah, it's, um, it's so funny. Like, I mean, it's not funny, but so I was like at, you know, my annual with my doctor a couple years ago and I thought I had like felt a spot on my boob that I was like, oh, I can't feel it all the time. And I just, my doctor didn't really feel anything. Um, and I went to my gynecologist right after that, who was like, let's get it checked out. And I was like, I don't think we need to. And she was like, eh, I think we need to. So they sent me for, um, I remember this cause I screamed at you. Yes. My, my gynecologist actually said to me, do you want to be having a different conversation in five years? 
And then I pooped my pants um, and I said no. <laughs> that was the right thing to say from a clinician standpoint. Yes, though. it was. <laughs> she said exactly what she needed to to get me to do what I needed to do. So I went and had this done. I had the, you know, a, a mammogram and an ultrasound done. And then they started explaining to me. So there was like some dark spots on my ultrasound, but they start telling me that because um, I had, it was like not long after I turned 30. They're like, well, when you're in your 30s, you start losing the density to your breast. So basically they're like, your boobs are starting to sag. And what you were feeling was the last of the firm tissue left <laughs> from when you were in your like teens and 20s. And nice. now they're just deflated. A bag of sand. <laughs> So at first I was like, man, what a relief. And then I'm like, well, I was just diagnosed with saggy boobs pretty much is what they told me. I can also definitely foresee myself getting like a reduction when I'm done having kids too. I don't have to worry about like my mammary glands having scar tissue or anything. Absolutely. Just that was like something that I, I think like puberty really, I, I had a really hard time with. Because I did, like, develop boobs so young that it makes you sexualized, kind of, at just, like, a really young age. And I I have always been – I mean, I can probably count on one hand the number of times, like, my cleavage has ever been showing. Because I'm just so modest when it comes to that. And I just don't – like, I don't want anybody looking at them, thinking about them. Nothing. They don't exist. (laughs) (laughs) What hump? (laughs) gonna minimize them and wear turtlenecks I certainly didn't um I mean I had some moments where I was like oh like I'm wearing this in order to get you know Mm -hmm. my significant other or whatever to Mm -hmm. enjoy my boobs or whatever but um I don't feel as though I've ever gone out of my way to create cleavage Mm -hmm. it just exists but it's also that thing of like the clothes that were available for girls my age yes did not, like Abercrombie, for example. We, and we talked about this in another episode, that era where girls were wearing, like, push-up bras, and then you had, like, the lacy tank underneath, yes. and, like, another tank top, and then you had that, like, Henley that was, like, a button-up, and you would wear it, like, unbuttoned right. with all the tank tops underneath. And I remember all these girls I went to school with having these, like, nice, like, def- this defined cleavage, and I was like, my cleavage starts at my fucking chin. Like, I don't, how... It's just, they're just mashed in there. There's because no also, definition. There was no option. Like, I mean, I wear a 40G bra. Mm-hmm. That wasn't an option. No. I, it was, I was like a 36C. I didn't start wearing the right bra size until I was like in my very late 20s. I did not start. Well, I was probably when I was in my, when I was 30 I, and at my lowest weight, I was probably wearing about the right size, mm-hmm. more or less. But I was wearing like a 34D. I was probably closer to like I mean I probably could have been like a 34c frankly I was Mm -hmm. getting pretty tiny but um the (laughs) where I am now like yeah like just the projection has changed so much and like those weren't an option but also I distinctly remember in part of my body image nothing in Abercrombie fit me the yeah. Shirts didn't fit me. No. Nope. And part of the reason they didn't fit me is because to cover my boobs, it meant that the shirt stopped at my belly button. Yeah. And everybody had super long shirts. I don't know if you're our age listener, but <laughs> the shirts were our jeans long. at the time <laughs> had belt loops at the pubic bone. They yep. were so fucking low rise. It was so weird because like the <laughs> jeans were super low rise, but the shirts were so long. Yeah. Like and now we have super high rise jeans and, and crop super, tops. Yeah, short so. shirts. <laughs> yeah, it was like not a good phase for my body type. Yeah. And that's another thing I feel like is not addressed too is that like your boobs are not static. No. So, you know, you have this philosophy. I had no idea you were supposed to get measured like every other year. It's and it's so funny because like I still, until something is like uncomfortable, I'm like, well, the fuck is this fitting yeah. right? And then I'm like, maybe I need to remeasure myself. And I've, I'm off by sometimes a cup size. Yeah. Because make sure, you know, you go online. There's a website with a measurement tool. And there's like five different measurements that you take. But you're actually going to have like a bra that fits you. 
And it's called a bra that fits, funny enough. Oh, <laughs> that's right, it is. <laughs> it's almost like uh, osmosis. <laughs> um, and like when my period's coming, my boobs get way bigger. Oh my God. It's just. Yeah, it's I mean, it's wild. It's, like the hormonal like hot air balloons, they yes. just are like okay. Well, I'm like, why do they feel so heavy? Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like I can even look at pictures and I can see like, oh yeah, my boobs used to start like under my collarbone, and now they like, don't. We actually joked about that in one of our early episodes. Yeah, my root is is the same place. Yes, <laughs> the root of my boob is the same place, but the where end it, point <laughs> where it lands is much closer to my waistline. Now. And I feel like it. Like, when we were growing up, it was just always jokes about older women with their saggy boobs. Mm-hmm. But, like, there wasn't a lot of conversation about, like, well, and how that changes over time. And, I, like, the density in the breast tissue. Didn't know that until I went and had that ultrasound done. Well, and I have... I'm stacked. My mother is not. Yeah. And never was. Yeah. So, in that respect, she couldn't really relate to me. Yeah. And didn't know... Other than, like, you just need a sports bra. And oh, like, God. I come from a line of very busty My women. On my dad's side, they are. But yeah. not so much on my mom's side. And it wasn't... Um, it was just never really discussed. And I, well, I never really saw my dad. So mm-hmm. I couldn't really act like, hey, dad. <laughs> Tell, me Tell me about, about your, your mom's, mom's tits. tits. <laughs> <laughs> what an awful moment for us to have the same thought at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, so Katie. How did you become friends? <laughs> Oh boy, that was something. Oh god. Um my my grandparents are gonna smite me from the beyond. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> my grandma probably thought it was funny. My grandpa was <laughs> rolling his eyes at me. Shame on you, Catherine. <laughs> um but yeah, no, it's just it's it's you know, that kind of thing where there's <laughs> such a void. Again, I I maintain males and females should be separated. For health classes through middle school, yeah, you should have sex specific uh, health education. What does like imagine how your health class would have felt and benefited you if you could even learn about STIs, yeah, and what they look like on female genitalia, what they feel like on female genitalia, what they look like on male genitalia, mm-hmm. what it smells like or whatever feels like when you're touching it on male genitalia i don't know (laughs) thankfully i've never the goal is to gross you out that's the goal (laughs) right like just having those things where you're like oh like i bet you wouldn't have to worry about abstinence only education if you showed people a gnarly genital wart for sure (laughs) come on i mean and showed it to just the group of girls so then they leave class and they see the group of guys and they're like i would appreciate if you just never talk to me again (laughs) Yeah, I... Your wiener scares me. Yeah, And they could say the same thing about, you know, a blue waffle. So... Reasonable. Yeah. Reasonable response. I mean, my sex ed was initially done in Catholic school. So, so it super comprehensive. was lacking. And we had Did a question box. they just use, box. like, a laser pointer on the crucifix? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. They just point out Jesus' nipples and that was it. <laughs> um, <laughs> they had, like, a question box where you could, like drop questions in. So, you know, I grew up with a mother who was a nurse. So I had had the sex ed conversation when I was like six or seven because my mom was pregnant. Mm. She was like, she's going to be asking questions that I need to be answering before she asks them. Um, So a lot of things I already knew, but was noticing that what we were getting was not comprehensive. So I was putting questions into the question box to facilitate conversation that I felt like wasn't happening. Uh huh. So I put in questions like, what is a condom? So that they would have a conversation. Did they? Uh, yes, but it was very say? brief. The Satan hat? Yes. <laughs> it's something the it's devil made puts of lambskin <laughs> and it is satanic. Soaked in vinegar. <laughs> it burns <laughs> and it kills your baby. Forever. You'll never have a baby again. And you're a trollop. <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, It was definitely lacking. And and you're right, because even in high school, we, we covered it, but it was done in a co-ed class. Yeah. And we had this weird um, health teacher who had a lunchbox that she would bring in. And the lunchbox had these little black, they were like in black fabric, 
And they, it was supposed to be like a set of testicles that you could palpate and try and find a lump or, you know, a pair of breasts so that you could feel those and try and feel a lump or like what the texture is supposed to feel like that she would pass around the classroom. So she would just pass the lunchbox around and you're supposed to go in and fondle the things in this bag. Guess how many teenagers are going to do that? None. That sounds like an idea cooked up by a priest who is now defrocked and was investigated by the diocese, frankly. This was in public school. Oh. She was just a weirdo. I don't remember what her name was, but she was weird. Well, I maintain who thought that up, so. Yeah. I mean, you're probably right. So, yeah, it, it was, I just think, like, the, the sex ed is really lacking, which is why when I started covering this, I was like, I kind of feel like we need to do a deep dive and really talk about what happens in puberty and yeah. what happens with a menstrual cycle and <laughs> what's a placenta? What's a placenta? <laughs> I didn't even know. I thought the baby was inside of it. What the fuck? I mean, what the fuck do I know? And that's what I'm saying is like we there's a lot. Maybe inside not the taught. placenta, you have a big problem. I feel like that. I not guess. Even yeah. I don't even who who even knows at this point, and we don't know because nobody explains this. Yes. Yeah. But this is also, I mean, how much of what we do on this podcast is trying to like destigmatize things, like. True. Sure. We on so good. on air had a conversation where we debunked a incorrect thought I had about a placenta. True. As it happened. So yeah, it's it's I just think like so much benefit can come from like having conversations about this. I did not know a lot about menopause. Yeah. Fucking ten years? Perimenopause? Are you fucking kidding me? I I'm I you will know when I hit it because I will just scream. <laughs> if it happens before I'm forty five. I'll be real dry and screaming. Yeah. I mean, realistically, I, I, I don't want it to happen before I'm 48. I want 13 more years. That's reasonable. I think so. Yeah. Especially if I'm not going to actually hit menopause until I'm 51. I mean, at least we know that the average age is four years. The duration of perimenopause. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the average duration is four years of perimenopause. Um and I just, I mean, I would like to think of it from a more positive light and think about like how freeing it is that I'm going to hit that point and I am not going to have two weeks of PMSing with then a week of feeling like garbage yeah. and the money that goes into buying new period underwear and trying out a different cup and... Yeah, all you need then is to like stock up on lube. Yeah, apparently. that's it. And if I can just or buy like a big a bottle, bottle, yeah, yeah, then that's fine. Yeah. An air conditioner, fine. I can manage that for sure. Um, so I, I do think that there's like I'm I'm trying to think of it from the context of like how freeing it would be. Then you're almost living like a man. Then you don't have to be dealing with all of these factors that like men just don't have to ever deal with, except when they're running. And I'm pretty sure their flappy doodles get in their way. I don't understand how. And you know are. when when they look for sympathy, like, well, I got to deal with. No, I don't care about your balls being sweaty. You know what else gets sweaty? My boobs, and they're a lot it's bigger. Fine. My boobs are sweaty right now, and mine it's too. fucking January, and yeah. I'm sitting still. <laughs> yeah, so are mine. Yep, it's it's terrible, and they're heavy. So heavy. If I wear a sports bra too long, it like pulls on my neck, and I get cramps. I got. I had a PK. I had PK take a picture of it last night because I got home and I was wearing like a wireless bra. Mm-hmm. At work, and I took my bra off, and I took it off, and it was like that feeling of like, you know, it's like you're sleeping, and you're on a seam or something, <sighs> and you move, and it's like the pressure point yes. or something. It felt like that, but it was like right where the bra line was, like under my armpit. Yeah, um, it's the worst. Yeah, it was like right on my rib cage, and I was like, whoa, that fucking hurt. Like, I didn't realize that I was... It's like in your I skin. Guess, yeah, like it had folded on itself or whatever. And so we were talking, and I, I mean, I got home at, like, four, and um, so I took my bra off almost immediately. Yep. <laughs> In fact, and it's usually at the back door, and it winds up on the kitchen table until the next time I go upstairs. <laughs> well, like, an hour and a half later, I'm, like, walking around, and I was like, it still hurts. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? And so I, like, felt it, and I was like, no, it, like, stings. Yeah. And I, so I had him take a picture, and he was like, no, it looks like. Like, maybe, maybe the soap didn't come off at all or something. He's like, it's, like, raised. Like, mm-hmm. do you have, like... And so I put, like, a steroid cream on it because I was, like, unclear if it was the adhesive or the elastic on the, the yeah. bra or, like, there was extra... And detergent. it's, like, an area where the skin is sensitive. It's, right. Like, nothing... It was right, right above my tattoo, mm-hmm. which also made me think that I was donating my organs because it hurt so bad to get a tattoo there. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I know like when I got both of mine and she got very close to my armpit, it got real sweaty real quick. Mm-hmm. Real, oh yeah, I was extremely spicy. sweaty when I got my tattoo when I was done mm-hmm. and like shaking from the adrenaline mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, I also did that a month after I got my PTSD, so <laughs> there's a lot going on. <laughs> I wanted to really hurl myself into the middle of the tornado and lean in. As usual, and as that recent Elise Myers post said, I was not born with the failure gene. I don't think (laughs) I can fail. If I try, I can pretty much do it. I'll (laughs) figure it out. That is my motto. (laughs) My my genetic makeup is probably success. Meanwhile, I'm like, (laughs) I'm going to need five sick days for my period and... (laughs) Also, I'm never wearing underwire again. And also, don't approach me because I am skittish. The end. <laughs> also, I have horns. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to learn ballet. <laughs> I have horns and um, a raccoon tail. So you're a furry. Nope. <laughs> I am my own creature. <laughs> I am my own you're little lemur creature. Yes. <laughs> I'm my own cryptid. <laughs> Oh my God. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into boobs and periods and hormones. And Save for your retirement now. If you're not married yet, get a fucking prenup. I and I'll be it. honest, even if you're married, have your own account. You can get a, post, uh, a post-nuptial agreement as well if you're already married. So you, c- you could do that too. But protect your finances so that when you become a man in your 60s, <laughs> you can live your best life. Or maybe your 50s. Or maybe your 50s. Or you know what? Maybe you started perimenopause really early and it was short and in your late 40s. You're free. Right. As a bird. And then you can just have the best retirement with all of the monies. And no periods. And no periods. And and way less hormone fluctuations. Way less hormone fluctuations and better management of your ADHD. Because you can just take your stimulants and be managed that way. Live your life. And just do an eat, pray, love thing. But it's like... uh, Eat, travel, uh, Eat. swim in cerulean. And drink. Seas. Yeah. Get drunk. Um, and if you're not close to that age, monitor your symptoms. And I know, like, I have literally just, like, a little notebook. And as soon as I started noticing, like, I mean, really, the normal course of my PMS is my nipples would hurt first. And then my boobs would hurt. Oh. And I'd be like, oh, nipples are sensitive, period's coming. And I would start making notes. It started this day. Because then when I'm finally like, when am I going to get my goddamn period? I could look and be like, oh, I'm only on day eight. Cool. I have, you know, <laughs> six more days to go. And then my period, roughly, and then my period will be here. Um, you know, keeping track of things like that so you can prepare for them. I personally would always try and make sure, like, if I knew uh, it's coming in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to move some things around, lighten things up for myself, maybe reschedule some things that are just going to feel overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and tracking your symptoms so that you know what's normal for you and you're prepared. And it also, I feel like, lessens some of the anxiety, like if you have a rough idea of what's coming. Um, for sure. And I think that is the benefit. I know that, like, we've talked about struggling with day planners. Um mm-hmm. And using them consistently. But I do think that there is a benefit to having a planner available to you that works for you and is designed in a way that you like. Right. Um, And even if you're not using it every single day, when you hear something like this and you're like, okay, you know what? I am going to try to, you know, set an alert on your phone every day at 4 p.m., write your note for how your, your hormones are feeling or how just you know, two or three words Mm -hmm. of how you're feeling and monitor that thing that you want to monitor for the next month, even if it's just for the month before your next doctor's appointment. Yeah. So you can at least say, this is what I've been feeling the last four weeks. Mm -hmm. And I can say, like, I've been tracking it. Generally, yes or no, this is what it goes, you know, when I'm not tracking it too or whatever. Right, right. But I do benefit even if I don't definitely using a day planner all the time now because of the podcast yeah. but even if I fall off of it for a little bit having the ability to get right back into it it's so yeah. helpful yeah and um 
I had another thought that I was going to add to that. And now I forgot what it was. Cool. Doing good. Um, well, this is going to be an ongoing conversation. Yeah, yeah cuz um, um was it the last episode we talked about how we'll come back to this to talk about like PCOS and Yeah, I yeah, I do want to do um an update to this that includes like um things like PCOS, that's something I personally um have dealt with for uh ever and um you know, talk about like hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism. Um, I would like to kind of dip into transitioning if you're in a uh, transition of identifiers, um, how that can impact ADHD and the hormones that go with it, those hormonal changes. Um, but if there's something else that you want us to touch on, let us know. Um, like with everything else, just tell us because we also like hearing from people. Um, Every email. I'm like baffled. We get really excited. So excited. Like you guys might think it doesn't matter that much. We get really pumped. Yeah. Yeeting ourselves into the sun is usually the phrasing that we use. And every Patreon sign up. We screech. Every time. It just blows our mind. Actually, uh, last Patreon, our last new Patreon that we had, Katie air kicked. She was so excited. (laughs) I did. She literally came over and air kicked. I did karate at Garrett's desk at work. Yes. (laughs) I was like, I like that you got so excited there was an air kick. And she was like, yeah, I'm pumped. Black belt checking in. Pew, pew. Estrogen levels are high. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was so, so excited. Yeah, we were really excited. Oh, so you're just enjoying know. your ad-free episode. Yes. Limbo, limbo bud. Limbo bud. <laughs> um, and what else do we have? What are other things that are coming up? Well, we're going to be doing some interviews with some other <gasps> that's podcasters right! soon. Yes, that's going to be really exciting. We'll give you more deets on that when we get a little bit closer, but that'll be super exciting. Yeah, um, we're, we're so excited. Um, at least one interview in February and another one in March, probably. Yep. Um, and, you know, if there's other podcasters or people that you think you'd like to hear from on this podcast and you'd like to hear us interview or Mm -hmm. just shoot the shit with um you know if you have a connection with them then like let them know about us anybody want to come talk about periods (laughs) do it all day (laughs) let let us know about them and we can do our best to try to make that happen Mm -hmm. um but yeah we're super excited to uh to have that coming up that is even the whole spring like we have stuff laid out we have like announcements coming there's like so many things that we're working so on so many announcements yeah yes so are... stay tuned because we have like a lot of exciting stuff coming up yeah this is going to be a fucking cool year it is there's like yeah <laughs> we can't wait to tell you about all the ah! things that are, all the coals in the fire um sidekick <laughs> Katie's, as soon as she gets up, she's going to do another air kick. Um, I think that's it, right? We've covered I think so. all our, all yeah. our bases. So, um, uh, you know. So we'll continue this conversation about hormones soon in the future, in the next, you know, probably month or two. Um, and in the meantime, be kind to yourself because hormones are hard. Hormones are hard. ADHD is hard. Um, and keep an eye out for vaginal dryness. <laughs> because the bar is ankle high. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with a brand new episode to delight your brain juices. In the meantime, the best way to support us is to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast streaming platform. You can keep up with us during the week on Instagram and Facebook at The Bar is Ankle High and on Twitter at Ankle High Pod. If you want even more Ankle High hot takes in your life and have a few dollars to spare, consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash The Bar is Ankle High. We post bonus episodes there full of our karaoke attempts, Am I the Asshole discussions, and wondering how we even managed to survive this long. Patreon subscribers also get exclusive access to our secret Patreon-only Facebook group and get added to our close friends list on Instagram. Until next week, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high.